PowerPoint presentation. It is available for download on my catching website, catching-101. So if you guys don't want to take notes, uh, you, you can definitely do that. But if you want to just download it later, you can do that as well if that's easier for you. Uh, like I said, uh, when we talk about catching, there's a lot of things uh, on catching topics. You know, I spoke uh, a few weeks ago, and it was about time management and how, how tough it is to coach catchers at times because there's so many different responsibilities at the block and throw and, uh, you know, working a bullpen and head and pop flies and fastball with mile pitches and building bunts and all this stuff. But today I really just want to kind of stick to the basics. Uh, and, and one thing that, that I think we've got to work on a lot is just the basic things. A lot of things get overlooked uh, pretty easily. So one of my favorite quotes uh, was a book from, uh, from John Gordon's training camp right last year. He says, the best athletes in the world aren't 100% better at anything. They're 10% better at everything. Um, and for you guys that haven't read that book, I would definitely recommend it. Uh, it's quick, you can read it in a couple days, but it's an excellent book. And, and I thought that made a lot of sense. With, you know, to, what separates guys between the level they're at now and the next level is not necessarily that the guys in the next level are 100% better or something. They're not unbelievable uh, compared to guys at a lower level or high school level between college. They're just a little bit better at everything. You know, a lot of times they're, they're a little bit better receivers and a little bit better blockers, and they run the bases a little bit better. Uh, they might hit for a little bit higher average. And it's the small things that culminate uh, to, make them, to make them much better. So it's, it's something that I, uh, really hit me and stuck with me. Uh, if you guys want to read, you know, want a good book to read, I would definitely recommend it. Uh, so like I said earlier, the foundation, I, I, I think, are stances. Uh, we'll go over our stances. We'll talk about receiving. We'll talk about blocking. Uh, we'll talk about throwing to second base. And then we'll open it up for Q&A. And we'll talk about whatever you guys want. Um, when we talk about our stances, uh, in our program, you know, you may go somewhere else or heard somebody else speak and they may name them differently or they may have a, an extra one or one less, but we say there's three basic stances. We say our signal stance, where we can get the signals to the pitchers. Our primary stance, where there's no runners on or less than two strikes. And then we have our secondary stance, where we're a little bit more athletic. Uh, when guys are on base, we've got to be ready to block and throw uh, and, and board two strikes on the hitter. So we don't want to block a third strike so that obviously the runner doesn't uh, advance on ball in third. So when we talk about our signal stance, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the, the main thing I teach our guys is, I say we should generally start with our heels about six inches apart. Again, everybody's a little bit different, but there's a direct correlation between my, my heels uh, or my feet and my knees. The wider my feet are, the wider my knees are, uh, and then I let more guys see my signs we'll talk about in a minute. But I, I like my heels to be about six inches apart, uh, with my toes pointed towards the shortstop and the second baseman. So uh, where our toes point to what middle infielders does is it, it points our knees towards the middle infielders, uh, which in turn lets, we really only want three people to see our signs. We want the pitcher to see our signs. Uh, we want the, the shortstop and second baseman to see our signs as well. Um, well. What the middle infielders will do is they'll shift a lot of times. But in the example I always use, whether it's a camp or a clinic, is imagine the biggest right hand here in the league's up and we're throwing a change up. We're expecting them to either swing and miss or pull it. So our shortstop and second baseman, they might want to shift into the sixth hole. They might even give a sign behind their back to let one of the outfielders know so they can shift to determine what the pitch is. So uh, we want we'll the middle infielders and our pitcher uh, see the signs. We'll say our mitt is an extension of our knee. Uh, I see a lot of guys when we give our signs, we get in our stance. Some of them, they, they try to block it and try to shield too many things. And, and their mitt actually covers the signs. And their second, I'm sorry, the shortstop can't see the signals. Uh, or they put it too low to the ground. Trying to, trying to protect the signs from the third base coach, but really it's, it's not doing exactly what we want to. You know, we say we, we put our, uh, the outside of our left forearm on the outside of our left thigh, uh, and it's just an extension of our knee. Uh, again, don't get too crazy, get it too low or, or too round, don't do anything like that. Uh, we get our signals up against our cup, uh, pretty self-explanatory. When we get our signals too low, a lot of times guys on deck circle, they can see them. Uh, you know, the guys looking at, especially the higher level you play, those guys are looking for things like that. Or if the sun sets behind you, a lot of times there's a shadow cast across the plate, but you got to be careful uh, and not shift in, their, shift in their position where we want the pitch thrown to early because the shadows uh, cast and give, give the location away to the batter. Uh, and then lastly, we talk about our signal signs, I want my chest up. Uh, one thing which we, we have a, a great field and great lights, and we don't have too many issues with shadows at our place. But I know when I was in high school and a little bit younger, we played a lot of ballparks and, and the lights weren't, weren't great all the time. <coughs> so what happened is it created a shadow uh, over our signs and everybody's seeing the picture. They, they, they look in, they can't see, and they, and they keep doing this. And, and it disrupts their tempo, it disrupts their rhythm. And it's really not good for anybody. Uh, we, we want the guys to be able to see our signs. If they can't see your signs, you've got to figure something out. And I think a lot of times it's easily just put my chest up, up in the air, uh, and, and that'll work uh, to our advantage. Um, I'm not sure if you guys can see up there. I got, the, I got a few pictures 
from the front and the side. Uh, I guess the light's right above it. Uh, but you see our guy right there, he, he set up in a, in a pretty good signal stance where his toes and his knees are both pointing towards the shortstop and second baseman, where the middle infielders and the pitcher can see the sign. His chest is up, he's giving the signal up against the cup, it's not too low, not too high, and then it's a mixing extension of his knee. Again, it's not, the, it's not down on the ground, uh, it's not covering the signal from the shortstop. That's in a pretty good stance. And, and like I said earlier, a lot of times this gets overlooked. Now, I'm not going to say that we spend 30 minutes a day practicing our signal stance, but I think it's important a lot of times. So there's a lot of guys that do a poor job in their signal stance, and again, the, the higher level you play, the more guys are paying attention, the more you're tipping attention. So we want to be real careful um, and try to avoid that set in a, in a various signal stance every time. After our signal stance, we have our primary stance. This is where we'll do our receiving. Uh, and again, everybody's probably heard it before, maybe called it something different. Uh, we say there's nobody on base, less than two strikes. We want to be very comfortable. Uh, for us, that's probably the most important thing. I want you to be very comfortable, because hopefully we're sitting in that position uh, for a large majority of the game. You, a lot of guys get low, and I think that's great. Uh, but I want to be comfortable. I want to be in a stance that you can stand in uh, or sit in or squat in uh, for quite a time. Uh, well, we've got to keep our throwing hand protected. This is a big one I see. I see it a lot with younger guys. Uh, even sometimes at higher levels, guys don't do a great job of keeping their throwing hand protected. I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, I guess it was about three or four years ago now, our starting catcher, who was a senior, we were playing uh, I see, see a couple guys in blue in this room. We played at the University of Kentucky. Um, he took a foul ball off the hand, and he missed the second half of his senior year, which really doesn't do anybody any good. He doesn't want to get hurt. He doesn't want to miss half the season. And the other starting catcher and captain, we don't want him to miss the season. And that's an injury that's very easily prevented. I know a lot of times guys may do something to your shoulder, and you don't have a whole lot of control over it, but when you get hit by a foul ball, that's something that it, it shouldn't happen. So you've got to keep our throwing hand protected, whether it's behind your back, or it's hooked in a loop behind your shoe, or it's in a back belt loop, it's somewhere behind you. Again, it doesn't have to be, uh, it doesn't have to be at the, at the, it's behind your back or, or wherever. There's a lot of different options there, a lot of different things you can do. We have to be square to the pitcher. Uh, this is a big one. We, we, we tell our guys that we want our body to be like a bullseye. I'm sorry, we want our body to be like a dartboard and our mix the bullseye. A lot of guys have probably heard that before. Um, uh, again, especially in a showcase atmosphere when guys think they're gonna throw or think something's gonna happen, Guys start to rotate and get too lean towards the side. We want to be a good, broad target. Um, I've been pretty fortunate. We've had a couple guys throw bullpens out of our place in pro ball now. And they talk about they want a, a wide catcher. It doesn't mean it have to be 6'5 and 240, but they want a guy back there that's wide. Even if you're a 5'10 guy like myself, you want to be wide and give the pitcher a good target with broad shoulders and broad chest. Uh, and then we want to give a good target. I, I say mid is at 2 o'clock. Uh, this is a, a little objective. Some guys have their uh, their index finger pointing a little bit higher, a little bit lower. I think a good rule of thumb is if my index finger is pointing about at a two o'clock position, that's a pretty good position to receive the ball. A lot of times you see guys get their uh, their elbow jacked up and their thumb goes down, and then from there it's just it's very difficult. I get thumbed a lot. It's hard to catch an inside pitch to a righty, uh, which is difficult to catch anyway. Uh, I, I want to be loose. I want to be relaxed. And it seems like the most natural position for most guys is they would just pick their hand up. Uh, and put it in front of their chest, they're going to catch a football or catch anything, their hand would be about in this position with their index finger about at 2 o'clock, give or take a little bit. And then I say low. Uh, we, we want to be low. It's, and again, there's different guys that, that squat and their, their, their butt's almost on the ground. And certain guys are a little bit higher, and that's okay. Uh, but we want to be as low as we can be where we're comfortable. Uh, because we want to give a low target. Where we give our target is directly correlated with how low we are. A lot of younger guys in particular, uh, even high school age guys, the first thing they do when I see them at a, at a game or in a camp setting or a showcase is they give their target around their face mask. And if that's where the pitcher throws the ball, well, it's going to get hit. It's in the middle of the strike zone. We want to be at the bottom of the strike zone, at the bottom of the knees. Uh, I'm not saying there's never a time to elevate a pitch, but the majority of the time I want to give the target at the bottom of the strike zone. And the easiest way to do it is just to get in the good low target. I'm sorry, get in the good low uh, primary stance. So again, I know the pictures are probably a little difficult to see, um, but if you look up here, uh, we have a side view and a front view. Uh, for the most part, his, his chest is pretty square. Uh, again, if you see, there's a, there's a slight tilt maybe, um, but his chest is square, his, his feet are fairly square, his mitt's at a good angle. Um, he, he looks pretty good right there, and his throwing hand's protected, as you see. As you can see on the picture on the right, he has his throwing hand kind of tucked into his shoe. Again, I have no problem with that. I don't think it necessarily has to be behind your back or be uncomfortable. Just somewhere out of the way where you're not going to get hit by a foul tip. Um, we can always go back to these at the end if anybody has any questions. Uh, but we'll move on to our secondary stance.